Hello and welcome to episode 7 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this video we're going to be taking a first look at PROX, otherwise known as User Defined Procedures. So just as a short recap in the videos that we've looked at so far, we've managed to make our way down from the very beginning of the program at line 10, looking at REM statements, how to define DIMMs, uh, all the various envelopes that are used by the game, and then moving on into the world of mode 7, the various control characters for mode 7, and the construction of some simple graphics and some simple sprites, all in mode 7 as well. But all of this that we've covered is really just the beginning, because this is essentially the start of the program where we define variables and, and other concepts that we'll need to use further down. Where the program really starts to get interesting is when we start to look at procs, which are procedures. And the very first of those is on line 430, and it's called PROC Initialize. Now, actually, it's a rather good procedure to start with because it's self-contained and it's, it's a very simple procedure. And actually, using Mr. Russell's excellent BBC Basic for Windows, we can easily jump down to the procedure as well and have a look at its definition. So we just right click on it here and you can see all the procedures that are in this game. There's actually quite a few of them. And at the top here, we've got PROC Initialize. And that takes me down to the definition, which is actually quite a long way down into the program at line 3050. So a user defined procedure can be called at any point during a program, but in order for it to work, it needs obviously to have been defined. Sounds fairly straightforward. And the fairly common approach with uh, any program really written in BBC Basic is to define all of your procedures at the bottom of the program. And so if you actually look at the overall program of Cosmic Invaders, you can see that there's a long list of def proc such and such, def proc such and such. And all of these really appear at the bottom of the program and our def proc initialize is one such procedure. Now, generally speaking, the reason that you put code into a procedure is because it makes for a cleaner program and makes it easier to read. That's the first reason. The second reason is because it just generally means that you've got access to code that you've written once and you can call it as many times as you like. That's probably the most powerful reason for defining a procedure. Now def proc initialize falls into the first bracket. It's really just defined in order to make the program a little bit tidier and a little bit easier to read and understand. Actually def proc initialize only ever gets called once by the program and that's right at the start uh, as we saw in the in the line above and it's a fairly straightforward procedure really. Uh, line 3060 here, all that does is call one of the FX commands within uh, the, B the uh, BBC Micro's operating system, and that ensures that sound is enabled. You can call FX uh, 210 with a 1, and that will turn sound off, but this is making sure that we've definitely got the sound on by passing in a 0. So that's all that line's doing here. And then from lines 3070 down to uh, 3100, we have a nice simple for loop. So for loops are one of the two possible loops that you can have in BBC Basic. You can actually see uh, the other kind down here, which we'll look at in another video, which is a repeat until uh, loop. But the for loop is quite useful when you want to repeat a given uh, instruction um, by a set number of times, really. So this is a for loop that will iterate 10 times. Remember that in BBC Basic, we index from zero. So that means that zero is, is one iteration of the loop. Um, therefore, it effectively counts as the first iteration. And then it goes up to nine, which gives us 10 iterations of the loop. So a for loop starts off by defining um, what it is that you want, or how many times you want to loop. And you define a variable to effectively stand for that value. So the first time that the loop loops around, my, my variable of i percentage will be 0, and the second time it loops, my variable of i percentage will be 1, and so on, until it reaches a value of 9. It will run the instructions, and then the for loop will end. So what's it actually doing? Well, it's, uh, it's doing something uh, with those two um, dim variables that we defined quite early on in the program. So the names string is the one that stores the names for the high score table, and the scores percentage is a dim that stores the scores for the high score uh, table. And as you'll remember, both names string and scores percentage are dims that have 10 entries, so for there for the top 10 scores. So the very first line puts um, a a static string into every entry within the high score. So 
uh, in this program um, the programmer has decided to just have the name or sorry the words mark beat you um, with three exclamation marks uh, just to emphasize that fact uh, so he's just putting that into the high score table for all 10 entries so every time the loop um, loops around it will put in the in the first instance it'll put mark beat you into the zero place uh, within the dim and then the second time the loop um, comes, comes around it'll put the same string into the into dim one dim two dim three dim four etc and it'll just loop around until it gets to the ninth entry and that'll mean that there are all 10 entries within names percentage will have uh, sorry name string will have mark beat you now the second line in the loop is doing a little bit more than that um, still a similar principle but it's doing something a little bit cleverer so this one is putting obviously a score into each of the entries for the top 10 high scores but it's varying what that score actually is so it's actually making use of this i percentage uh, variable uh, more than once first time around it's using it obviously to specify which entry within the high score table it wants to populate but then for the score itself it starts off with a value of 10,000 and then subtracts the I percentage variable multiplied by 1,000. Now, obviously, on the first iteration, I percentage is a zero, which means that it's zero times 1,000, which is zero. So the top 10, the top 10 entry in the high score table is 10,000. But then for each further iteration of the loop, obviously, in the next time it loops around, I percentage will be one, which means that we'll subtract 1,000 and therefore we'll get 9,000 into this to the second entry and then 8,000 and then 7,000 and so on, all the way down to the bottom, which means that we actually get different scores in the top 10 table rather than having exactly the same score repeated all the way down. And that's it. That's all that our def proc initialize is doing. So it's a very simple procedure, just gets called once. And really, it's been defined in a procedure just to tidy up the program. So if I jump back, uh, that's what line 430 in the program is doing. It's just making a call to proc initialize and then proc initialize. Obviously, any of the code within that procedure will get executed by the program. And that's how a user defined procedure works. It's just a very nice and neat way of calling a particular set of code um, but all we have to actually put in the, in the main body of the program is a call to that procedure and anything within the procedure will be executed. So that's our very first procedure uh, in our introduction to procedures. In the next episode in the series, we're going to start to take a look at how the overall program is stitched together. And I'll be using a flow diagram to actually explain the logic of the overall program and how all of the various other procedures within the program are called in sequence and at a given point within the program in accordance with the logic of the program itself. So I hope you found that informative and that you now understand what a user defined proc or procedure is all about and why we use them. And as I say, hope you've enjoyed it and that you'll join me for the next video in the series. And until then, goodbye.